Good morning and welcome to our live stream audience today. This is the place where we come, whatever the circumstances, and we gather our hearts around God's word, the place where we truly find rest in whatever the circumstances. We have with us Pastor Ken Fry from St. Paul's Appleton as our guest preacher this morning. As we meditate on God's word today, we can think in a time like this, the devil is working overdrive, trying to throw us into sin and overcome us. So as we prepare for the battle, we've got to know the enemy that we face. So today we have a reconnaissance report so that we can know our enemy. We begin our worship today with our opening hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, hymn number 125. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, or discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have pierced me, and your, and your hand has come down upon me. My guilt has overwhelmed me, like a burden too heavy to bear. For I am about to fall, and my pain is ever with me. I, I confess, confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O oh my God. Come quickly to help me, O oh Lord, my Savior. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Our Redeemer, Redeemer the, the Lord Almighty, Almighty is, is his name. name. 
is the, is the Holy One, one of Israel. Israel. There, there is, is no, no other rock. rock. We sing about this rock in Psalm 18. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, the mighty rock of our salvation, give us such strength of faith that we may cling to you in every trouble and armed with your strong word, be preserved from every assault of Satan and his forces of evil through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's Passion reading comes from Matthew chapter 26. Our section is entitled, The Trial Before the High Priest. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest, he entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. 
Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Christ, who hits you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he went out to the gateway, where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds, we are healed. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, hymn number 353. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for meditation this morning is recorded in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, where Paul writes, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is our text. 
Dear fellow militant Christians, when you Google something, that search engine actually searches only about 4% of cyberspace. The other 96% is what some call the deep web. In the deep web, you will find things like technical drawings, military information, and some secret communications. Also in the deep web, there is something that people call the dark web. And in the dark web, you can find credit card numbers for sale. You can find assassins for hire. You can find drug deals. There is human trafficking and sex trafficking. It's a scary place. It's scary partly because it's invisible and partly because it's evil. Today we are being warned about something else that is also invisible and evil. But it's not so much a something as it is a someone. We are being warned today to know your enemy. Now, when we talk about knowing your enemy, we're implying that we're at war, and the fact is, we certainly are. Earlier in this chapter, the Apostle Paul had warned about when the day of evil comes. Now, when is that day of evil? Well, it could be some tragedy coming into your life that just turns your life upside down. It could be a sickness or an accident. It could be those last days before your last breath. Or it could be every day as you face those trials and temptations of each and every day that, that Satan shoots at you like a sniper from the rooftops. Now you might say, well, I don't really want to be part of this war. Maybe you just want to go back to your shows and sugar and, and just pretend the war isn't there, but you can't. You were drafted into this war when you were baptized. And you won't get a furlough until you reach the shores of heaven. And so we need to be ready. We need to be ready to fight in this battle, to fight in this war. A certain football coach of a certain Wisconsin football team once said, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Now, despite the way a lot of fans act, we would say that's not true. Winning a football game isn't really that big of a deal in the big picture of things. But Vince Lombardi was right. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, not about football, but about this battle that we are in, for we are in a battle for our eternal life. And so we need to be ready. We need to know the enemy. And the, and the first thing that we need to know about the enemy is about what the enemy is not. Paul writes here, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. George Armstrong Custer is famous for one thing. He got his army wiped out at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And why did that happen? Because he didn't know the enemy, because he underestimated the power of the forces he was fighting. He was fighting the wrong battle, and sometimes so are we. Our battle is not against calories and cholesterol. Our battle is not against Democrats or Republicans. Our battle is not to get the government out of our lives. Our battle is not against that mean boss or those nasty co-workers or that sibling or classmate you haven't talked to in days? Our battle is much bigger. Our battle is with the forces of evil. We need to understand who that enemy is. See, Satan is a deceiver. He, he wants us to think that our battles are those worldly battles I just talked about. He wants us to focus on those things and forget about him. He wants us to think that he doesn't exist. Or if we do think about him, we think about him as this funny guy in a red suit and a pitchfork. See, Satan is a deceiver. 
That's what he does. And he wants to destroy us eternally. We know what our enemy is not. We need to know what our enemy is. And our enemy is evil. Paul wrote, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Your enemy is the forces of evil. These enemies don't play by the Geneva Convention. They don't care about collateral damage. They want to get everybody. Your cute little five-year-old and your sweet old grandma. These enemies are not, will not hesitate to attack a child on his first day of school, a teenager on a date, or that elderly person lying in the nursing home battling despair because of his chronic illness. Satan does not fight fair. He will kick you when you are down. He will attack you when you least expect it. And he will try to get you to sin or to, or to doubt. And if he gets you to sin, then he will point the finger at you and say, you're guilty, you're guilty. And if you don't sin, if you resist him, he will make you feel like you're so special that you don't even need Jesus. Most of us speak English. That's our native language. That's what we grew up with. Satan's native language is the lie. That's what Jesus said. He said Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And he uses two great lies that are very effective. The first one is this. You're all right. You're a pretty good guy. Yeah, yeah, God's not going to send you to hell, not you. You're, 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 you're good. Don't, don't worry about all this church stuff. You don't need that. Second lie is just as effective, but just the opposite. He will tell you that you are such a sinner. You are so wicked. You are so bad. God could never love a person like you. God will never forgive you. Both lies. See, Satan wants us to doubt God's love, to think that God doesn't care, and then he drags us deeper into his darkness, making us become angry with God and hate God and give up on God's promises and, and throw out his word altogether and lose our faith. And see, that is the goal. Satan wants every believer to lose his faith. And he wants every unbeliever to not to come to faith, because he's evil. Make no mistake about it, Satan is evil and he is powerful. He had the power to show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in an instant. In an instant. He had the power to destroy God's perfect creation by leading our first parents to fall into sin. He is evil, he is powerful, and he is not alone. Our war is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Satan isn't working by himself. He has an army of demons out to, out to destroy us. He is not alone. But neither are we. We have the lights on here today because it's a little dark inside. Light drives out darkness. Even the light of a single candle in a dark cave will drive out the darkness. Light always drives out darkness. You have light. Not the light over your head, but the light in you. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching. You have a light that has driven out the darkness of Satan from your heart. It is a light that gives you hope, and faith, and a future so bright the scripture says we won't even need the sun or moon to give us light anymore. And that light, of course, is Jesus. Writing about Jesus, the apostle John said, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. When you walk into a dark room, what do you need? You turn on the light because you've got to see. If you don't have a light, you carry a flashlight. Otherwise, you're going to stub your toe. Light drives out darkness. Jesus is the light that drives the darkness of Satan from this world. He is that light because he came into this world to battle the forces of evil. The Son of God went forth to war to fight our enemies for us. And he knew the enemy. And so he did not let down his guard ever. He never complained, never tucked back, never lusted. He never let frustration get the better of him. He was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet is without sin. And then he lured Satan into a battle that Satan could not win. A battle fought on a hill called Calvary. The Apostle Paul tells us, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Know your enemy. Fight your enemy, but not with your own strength, because there is a traitor inside that is in league with the enemy. Now fight with Christ's strength. Walk in his light by staying in his word. And with the weapons of the word and clinging to Jesus, we can fight and we will win. Amen. This time we join in the responsive prayer of the church. Blessed Redeemer, we know that it was for our sake that you endured the trials, the suffering, the humiliation, betrayal, and bitter death that you endured on the cross. You, you sacrificed, sacrificed your sin for, for our us sins so that, that we could be reconciled, reconciled to God. God. We know that we have sinned against you in countless ways, yet, yet your, your suffering, suffering and, and death have, have opened, opened to us the door to eternal, eternal life. life. Precious Savior, give us willingness and strength to follow you on faith's journey, even through heartbreak and suffering. Be with us in every temptation, helping, helping us, us to overcome, overcome so that we may we glorify you with a godly, godly life, life and steadfast faith. Through your merit and intercession, move our Father in heaven to give us all those things which we need. We bless your precious name. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our final hymn, Jesus Lead Us On, hymn 422.
Now the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. Amen. Thank you to our guest preacher for bringing us God's word in this difficult time. Just a few announcements. This live stream service will be archived and available on Facebook and on the Mount Olive website. Feel free to share these services or just the sermon with your friends and family during this time when they might not be able to worship. Join us on Sunday at 9 a.m. when we will live stream our usual Sunday morning service. And also, if you are not able to receive the updates uh, that Mount Olive has been sending out during this time, feel free to contact the church office so that we can keep you informed or so that we can get you on our email list. God's blessings during this time, and God go with you in the weeks ahead. Thanks very much, Ken. You're welcome. Very nice message.